Jesus. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of RTTB News relating to the Bible. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Um, had a few things going on, but we are back on track. And in today's episode or broadcast or whatever you want to call it, we are going to be watching together a video done by Rod Pickens. Um, he claims to have gotten a word from the Lord, a, a vision, a revelation. So let's watch it and let's see what we can get from it. The word of the Lord came to me in a vision. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. I was talking to my wife and the word of the Lord came to me in a vision. I appeared before an open area where there was grass and I was sitting at this well and I stood up and I didn't understand why I was there. And the voice of the Lord told me, he said, son, this is your post. And I said, okay, Lord, but I don't know why I'm at a well because I wasn't getting anything out of the well or putting anything in. He said, this is your post. He said, there are gonna be people that's gonna to come to this well and they're gonna to wanna to draw water. And he said, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cause you just like Jesus did the Samaritan woman to meet her at her point of need at the point where there's a continuing of going to the same well to draw water. He said, but instead I'm gonna to give to you that you're gonna pour into people the water that they never thirst again. So uh, as people began to come in and to this little open area where I was by the well, I would minister to them, I would encourage them. But as I began to uh, minister to different people, uh, I saw a far off somewhere in the hidden area, I saw some people coming. I didn't understand who they were, but as they began to get closer, um, their attire looked dark, it, their, their clothing was dark, everything was dark, and I saw this resemblance, this re resemblance of a number on their foreheads and on their body parts. Um, it, was a, it was a weird number, I couldn't make it out. But as I began to look closer, I began to realize that the people that were coming from a far distance looked just like us. And I looked in the crowd and there was one that looked just like me. And I began to get terrified. I was like, Lord, wait a minute. If these people get back to our town, the people won't even know who is who. I said, I'm the real one. So the, the, the whoever was coming was a fake one. It was a counterfeit. And I said, oh my God. And so the closer they got, I began to make out their identity and I knew they were, they were counterfeits. I, I knew there were um, people who would look just like us. And the word of the Lord spoke to me right at that moment. He said, son, he said, I must make known to you that uh, these are the people who's gonna come who look just like you, who perform works just like you. Matter of fact, they even can do miracles and things come to pass. He said they even operate by principles and even by belief. And they even get things and do things that you guys haven't done because you guys have, a tr you have trouble believing and applying God's principles. He said, but one thing they don't have and they won't have is the lifestyle. And so I began to get afraid. I said, God, what is going on? And I ended up, take I took off running and I began to run and I noticed they realized that I was a siren. I was um, a alert that was going to alert the people in the town that intruders were coming. And so as I took out running, they began to run after me. And I knew they was running after me to kill me because I was going to tell the town that intruders were coming and they looked just like us and they come to take our place. And so I began running and I ran into this forest and there were so many trees and I was running with everything in me as fast as I could and I turned back around and I looked and when I looked they were gone and so I remained perfectly still I was I didn't even move a muscle I was so afraid um, because I didn't know where they were and so I, as I stood there and waited one of them moved and I was like hold on wait a minute they camouflaged in the forest when I saw that, I, I, I knew at that moment that they were skillful. They were skillful in camouflaging and blending in with the environment. I've never seen anything like this. They, they were perfectly blended well. And so when I saw this, 
all of them jumped out of their, their place of hiding and they came after me again. And so I started, I took out running as fast as I could to get back to the town to warn the people that intruders were coming and they're coming to take our place. And, and the people who did not have discernment won't be able to identify who is who. You know, and and so uh, I took off running and I finally got back to, to the town. And right before I was able to yell out, you know, intruders were coming. I turned around to see where they were, to see if they were still close or far off. When I turned around, they were directly in my face. And I was afraid. I said, oh, my goodness. And I, when I turned around to take out running again, they had already surrounded me. And right before they grabbed me to kill me. God snatched me out the vision. And the word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord said, Son, sound the alarm. Write the vision. Make it plain. Create a song. Call it intruder alert. And I'm going to allow it to go across the nations and across the world as a signal, as an alert, as a warning for the body of Christ that the apostles and the false prophets and apostles and the false kingdom has risen and have come in to take our place. They come to destroy the very thing that God has established. Wow. Um, some people will say that his vision or revelation was was fake. But regardless if you believe this, this um, man is legit or false, I don't know too much about him. I've watched um, one of his videos, videos before where he Allegedly, he had an experience with hell, but he spoke a lot of truth, a lot of truth in that, in what he was saying. And it reminded me of a movie that has recently come out called Us. It's called Us. So I haven't seen the movie. I've only watched the previews, but I did do a little bit of digging. And it's interesting, the twist to the movie, because the people, the main characters of the movie, they're presenting themselves as one way. But the ones who are portrayed as evil in the movie, they are really the ones, I guess you could say the legit ones. And they're trying, they were trying to escape because the ones that were um presenting themselves as the normal the real people they weren't really the legit ones so i find i find that interesting because i came across this video and then i remember watching the the trailer of us and then i did a little bit more digging and i found out that there were some plot twists to it but let's watch that trailer that's a classic right there. What does I Got Five on it mean? It's about drugs. It's not about drugs, it's a dope song. Don't do drugs. Get in rhythm. Here you go. Here you go. Creep on in, on in. I can't believe how big they've got. You hear Gabe got a boat? Crawl, daddy! Ha, ha. He's kidding, right? He's not kidding. Hey, I think it's vodka clock. Oh, yeah. Where's Jason? Jason? Jason! Where were you? I didn't know if you were lost. Stick with me, and I'll keep you safe. I got <laughs> There's a family in our driveway. It's probably the neighbors. But y'all scared of a family? Hi, can I help you? Zora, put your shoes on. If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. Exactly like us. They think like us. 
They know where we are. We need to move and keep moving. They won't stop until they kill us. And we kill them. Wow, that's some um, pretty crazy stuff right there. Now, I know a person can watch the movie and they can get different perspectives, different understandings from the movie. And those perspectives may very well be right in regards to what they are saying in the context of what they are saying. But we want to look at it from a biblical perspective. Now, we saw the guy, um, Mr. Pickens, he dropped his word, and then we see this movie uh, coming out called Us that is kind of like depicting the same thing. Now, as I said earlier, when I did my research on this movie, they were stating that the plot twist to it is that the ones who were in the car that you saw driving, they were really... The doppelgangers they were really the evil one and then the ones that they were portraying as evil that was trying to kill them those were the real those were the original people now how do we apply that to understanding the bible and understanding how that relates to the bible and what's going on our flesh would be the person that we saw driving the car, the family that was going on vacation and stuff like that. Our, the new person that we are in Christ would be the person that we saw trying to kill or get rid of the old man, get rid of the old woman, the flesh, the ones who are presenting themselves as, as normal, as they are the good ones. Now the flesh sees us as the killers, the bad guys, the ones from hell, because the flesh doesn't want to relinquish power. The flesh sees what it wants to see. So just imagine you were in that movie, the family that was you and your family. That would be your old man or your old woman presenting themselves as normal, going on family vacation, having a good time and then you run into these doppelgangers that are trying to kill you that look just like you this is the flipping of good for evil and evil for good you see our flesh sees the new people the new creature new person that we are in christ as the bad guy and on the flip side we the new creatures the true us we see the flesh, our old man, our old woman, as the bad guy. So you have this, this struggle going on. This power struggle going on. You could say two natures of, two different natures of people fighting against each other. One wanting to be free and the other one, and wanting the other one to be dead. The flesh wants our spirit to be dead so the spirit, so the flesh can rule over us and be led by the flesh. Our spirit wants the flesh to be dead because the flesh is already dead and we want the, we want the spirit to be in control. So that's, that's really what they're portraying from a biblical perspective from that movie. And I found, I found that twist, um, kind of interesting. Now I know you can get into it. Um, where they have the dualistic principalities and all that other stuff. I understand that. But we're talking about it from a biblical perspective. So we want to go to the scriptures. We want to start in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 19 through 22. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, 
the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the what? Trumpet. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. My, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. I brought this first scripture up because he said the Lord told him that this is your post. So if you are at a post, you are supposed to be sounding the trumpet, sounding the alarm of war when the enemy is trying to get into our territory, trying to get to our people. If you are a watchman or a watchwoman on the wall. Then God says, for my people is foolish. They have not what? They have not known me. They have not known me. So we need to know God. If we knew God, then we would hear the sound of the alarm. We would hear the spiritual sounds that God is making. We would hear his voice in our spirit. And we would see it and hear it manifest in this physical world. So then we go down to Isaiah chapter 52, verse number 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So the watchmen and the watchwomen, we are supposed to lift up our voices. We're supposed to be singing together a glorious song, the glorious song of the gospel, just as the heavens and the stars and the planets they all sing the song of the gospel and sing of the glory of God. The book of Job talks about that. Isaiah chapter 56, verse number 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. So a watchman is not supposed to be blind. How can they be blind and protect the people? They are not supposed to be ignorant. How can you give people the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God through the Spirit if you are ignorant to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God through the Spirit because you are acting like a dumb dog? They cannot bark. They cannot cry aloud. They cannot speak. Sleeping, lying down loving to slumber so they love to do this so they were called for one purpose but they are doing something completely contrary to the purpose that they were called to sleeping sleeping in the dark sleeping in the night we know the scripture talk about that in the book of thessalonians and many other places we are not children of the on um, the night we are children of the day we are not of those that sleep nor slumber but of those that watch. Isaiah chapter 62, verse number 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, in reference to physical Israel. A lot of times Jerusalem is referenced as Israel, and Israel is referenced as Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is consisting of the people. That's what New Jerusalem is about. And then comes a city, but it's more so about the people. Physical Jews who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who are born again and grafted in Gentiles. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. So those of us who are called to be watchmen and watchwomen, we are not supposed to be holding our peace day nor night. We, we are supposed to be crying aloud and sparing not. 
ye that make mention of the Lord. So are you making mention of the Lord? Guard your post. Keep not silence. Keep not silence. If you fall asleep at your guard tower, then the enemy can creep in. If you fall asleep at your guard tower, then the enemy can creep in. You are at the guard tower to be watching. If you have a purpose of being at the guard tower to watch, that means that you must be, we must be at war. Because your commander in chief would not put you on watch duty in the watchtower as a watchman or watchwoman if there wasn't a possibility for the enemy to try to sneak in. We got to understand the times that we are living in. We have to understand what is going on. So we jump down to Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 17. Also, I set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. This is what's going on today with both with both physical Jews and physical Gentiles. More so physical Jews, God has set watchmen, the remnant of Israel, over the rest of Israel to um, sound the alarm, the sound of trumpet. And Israel, physical Israelites, they're saying, we will not hearken. They do not want to hear what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, yet they want to claim that they are worshiping and following the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing new under the sun. You can go back in the Old Testament and see that they were they were doing that. That happened when Aaron, when Moses went up to the, the mountain and Aaron, Aaron was down there with the people. Guess what they did? We know what they did, but guess what they did? They did it in the name of the Lord. So there's nothing new under the sun. This is just a weeding process. So we go to Matthew um, 13, because he mentioned also he saw dark people with a number on their on their head, and I think he also said a number on their body or numbers on their body. We can probably conclusively come to the conclusion that the number that he saw that he couldn't completely discern was 666. So this ties in with the wheat and the tares. So we go down to um, Matthew um, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Let's break this down a little bit. Let's digest this. But while men slept, so when the men were sleeping, the enemy came and he sowed the tares among the wheat and went his way he sowed the bad seed amongst the good seed the men were sleeping i'll repeat it one more time the men were sleeping the men were not supposed to be sleeping the men had fallen into a sleep because of sin and then that's when the enemy came because that caused the darkness to be upon the uh the world spiritual death but when the blade was sprung up watch this and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also did you catch that but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also so when the good seed the blade sprung up to bring forth fruit then that's when they popped up too so the tares they were mimicking the wheat the tares were counterfeiting 
what the wheat was doing. Just like your GMO right here. This is your GMO. Mimicking what real food does, but not completely being real food. But yet still having some type of benefit because they're feeding off of the food, the fruit that the wheat are bringing forth. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? For whence then hath it tares? So these servants, they were able to identify the difference between the good seed and the bad seed. They knew. They knew. They had a, they had a, a level of understanding where they were like, whoa, whoa, what's, what's really going on? How did these get here? And he said unto them, an enemy have done this. So God knew what was going on. He wasn't stupid. So why, everybody asked the question, why didn't God just destroy Satan? Why didn't he just do, do whatever? I'm going to show you. He, he tells you right here. He said unto them, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, without then that we go and gather them up. But he said, nay. Lest while ye gather of the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So it's telling you right here why everything had to happen the way that it's happening. People ask that question again. Well, why didn't God just destroy Satan? And why do we have to go through all this? Because God planted us here. And then the enemy came in because of what Adam and Eve did. And he planted his tares here his people here amongst us. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather of the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. The tares are like leeches. Their roots are intertwined with our roots. Their roots have become intertwined with our roots. So what will happen is if you go in there and you tear the tares up, then you're going to tear up the roots of the wheat, which is also going to kill them. But the tares, they are feeding off of the wheat. Let's go, um, let's go look at a root system. Let's go look at a root system so we can get a better understanding. Okay, let's get this one. This is a, a good one right here. We can use this as, as an example. Now I know, according to the Bible, you're not supposed to plant the same um, type of food in the same row, but y'all just bear with me. So, matter of fact, let's go look at um, let's get a better one. Let's let's use this one. So. Just for argument's sake, let's say this is a root, and this, I mean, this is a wheat, and this is a tear. Just for argument's sake. What happens is, when he was talking about, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them, what happens is, it's an interconnected system. So they're feeding off of the same source. So a lot of times, if you got two plants next to each other, and those of you who are into um, 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 horticulture and planting and stuff like that, you know this. The roots will become intertwined. They will become intertwined. So if this is the wheat and these are the tares, the tare roots will be growing, and then they will become intertwined with the wheat roots. Now, we are both getting fed by the Spirit. That's why God said he caused it to rain on the just and the unjust. You see, the patterns are all there. We just have, we just have to allow ourselves to, to see them. So God is feeding us, right? But because their root system has become intertwined with our root system, then they are technically leeching and feeding off of us. So the root system becomes intertwined, like I said, 
And so if you root if you root up the tears with the root system being intertwined, then you're also going to root up the wheat because the wheat have not fully grown yet. They they aren't they aren't they aren't of age yet, so their roots and everything are still they're still weak. You ever seen tree roots? They are strong. They are very very strong compared to what a little tree their roots are not strong they're not grounded to be able to fight off different things to be you know saying rooted amongst themselves based off of the seed that gave birth to all this the seed being christ so now we have a better understanding of why he why he said that so if he would have just did it like that from the beginning then we would not we would have never come to the knowledge the full knowledge of who we are supposed to be and why we are here which means that bible prophecy would not have been fulfilled so then it goes down in verse number 30 let both grow together see let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. So a lot of people, they read this and they get confused because this is talking about the end of the world. But this is a multifold prophecy. Every prophecy applies to the past, to the present, and the future. Every prophecy applies past, present, and future. So you can read this and you can say, okay, this applies to something that happened in the past. You can read this and say, okay, this applies to right now. And you can also read and say, okay, in the full context of it, it's applying to something in the future. Because if this applied to the past, then it was also referring to something in the present, which that's what we are in now. If it applied to the present, then it would mean that it referred to something that's going to happen in the future when people were reading it. So when they read this um, year, hundreds of years ago, then that right then was the present, but it was referring to something in the future. And you also have to understand that the end of the world, it started when Adam and Eve sinned. That really started the end of the world. And you can really go back farther than that in regards to understanding the end of the world. So people get confused on these terms and stuff like that. And you just have to have a biblical understanding. You just have to continue to, to, uh, study the, these things out so you're not confused and I try to break it down as as clear as I can I know I'm very um, I repeat myself a lot of times but I really want y'all to get it I don't want you to be confused the end of the world or oh, the end of the world is you know when when Christ comes back to destroy the earth and all these different things no the end of the world it been started that's just the culmination of it so we want to go to first john chapter 2 verse 19 it says they went out from where from us now what did he say he said these people they were trying to blend in they were trying to get in they went out from us but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us so the false prophets have to be revealed so that it could be made manifest that they were never of us in the first place because if they were of us they would have continued with us the people that fall away they were never of us in the first place that's why they went out from us but it has to be manifested that they were never legit in the first place that's why they left Satan, when he was Lucifer, he went out from us. He went out from Christ. But he, Satan, and his angels that follow with him, they were not of us. For if they, the fallen angels, and Satan, had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. They would no doubt have continued in the love of God. They went out from the love of God. But they, Satan and the fallen angels, I'm using that as an example, they went out. Why? 
that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So we can see who was who. It's the same story. Wheat in the tares. It's the same story. The patterns are there. So then we jump down to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. His ministers also. Matter of fact, let's bring up the, the previous scriptures on that. Let me uh, put this in here real quick. Y'all give me a second. Give me a second. Go to uh, let's go to 11 through 15 just in case. Hit my search button, wait for it to come up. Okay, let's scroll down, let's get back on track. So, I just remembered something I wanted y'all to see. All right, all right, here we go. So we want to jump down to verse 13. It says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. For such are false apostles. What do apostles do? Apostles go forth and they make disciples. And we know that apostles, they are sent on a specific mission. They are specific messengers sent from God. For a specific purpose but apostles make disciples they go forth and they preach the gospel to others so that they can be disciples of Christ so these if you have false apostles then that means you have false disciples who came forth from these false apostles so what are these false disciples going forth and doing they are preaching false doctrine so since the false apostles are deceitful workers then guess what the false disciples would be deceitful workers that means they know what they're doing so if the false apostles are transforming themselves into the apostles of christ that means the false disciples would also be transforming themselves into the false disciples of Christ. Well, what are disciples of Christ? Christians. You see, people get so caught up on what the Muslims are doing. They get so caught up on what the Hindus and the Buddhists and the Nation of Islam and um, all these different branches of religious organizations they get, they get so caught up on what they are doing when they don't even see the enemy. The real enemy are those who are posing themselves as Christians. Some of you who have been around for a long time, you know how long I have been preaching this. You have to watch out for those that profess to be Christians. Let me tell you something. If you haven't vetted me, if you haven't tried my spirit, you are already guilty of breaking the commandment of God. If you're just listening to me and you say that I'm legit because you see me dropping knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you are already deceived. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. How do you know that I'm not one of these false apostles or one of these false disciples unless you vet me? Even if I'm coming through the gate, you're supposed to say, let me see your credentials. Yeah, I know what you look like. I know who you are, who you say you are, but I need to see your spiritual credentials. Are we understanding? So again, it's the Christians, the so-called Christians, the ones that are false converts, the ones that profess to love Jesus, know Jesus, God, and all these different things. Those are the ones you have to look out for because that is how they are coming because they know where the truth is at. They know what Christ did already. It's done. At first, Christ got them. He, he played them in their own game. 
because the scriptures say that if the princes of this world had known they would not have crucified Christ but guess what now they know what's up so at first they was going around persecuting the Christians and then all that did was make the true believers that much more stronger so then they said okay well let's infiltrate them let's let's um counterfeit them and then we could deceive more people and get power through that so that's what's going on today people oh you you're scared of persecution this and that you don't even know how the enemy is operating you think that satan going around and killing killing folks and this and that you think satan going around and just you know what i'm saying with looking like the um the classic image with the with the horns and he's red and oh nah satan gonna come like a grandma satan gonna come like a grandpa satan gonna come so slick you ain't gonna know he's satan unless you're familiar with him because you know that we are at war and you know how to discern the enemy you don't even know how satan is coming you think satan coming to kill he coming with the, with the guns and the big guns and everything and the sword drawn satan ain't coming like that he will if he need to, but he ain't doing that right now because he's causing more destruction by being a deceiver, by having people to either think that he doesn't exist or having people to think that, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, when it's really Satan that you're talking to. That's how he is coming and getting people because now he can get more people on his side to do the work for him and then he can go do other stuff go have fun go have orgies and all these other things and you know go do things he deems more important so all these people oh, you're afraid of persecution you don't even know how satan is really operating in this world right now you're afraid of death you don't even know how satan is operating in this world right now how he's deceiving people because if you did then you wouldn't be saying stuff like that And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing. Don't marvel at this. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So if Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, what is the light? The light is Christ. He transformed himself into an angel of Christ, an angel of the gospel. And also, his ministers, they do the same thing. Your mother Teresa's of the world. The folk, majority of the folks that's in the so-called churches. So, he also said in the in the video they look just like us and one even looked like him and he also said the people won't even know who is who the ones who were coming they were the fake ones and they were the counterfeits then he said as they got closer he was able to make out who they were better so from a distance they blended in with the surroundings they blended in with the people they looked like they were coming to get the water but he said there was something different about them and as they got closer because he was walking in the spirit he was able to make out who they were better now he was he said he was in an open field right the reason that it was in, in an open field is because of some things that are mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy. In regards to when the altar was set up, it was supposed to be an open field. There was supposed to be no trees for a certain distance. Because God wanted nothing but light to shine upon that certain spot. Now, if you have trees surrounding your property, let's say the trees are very, very close to your property then the things that are in the darkness, they can creep up on you and you not even know. If you have people coming out of the forest, out of the woods, I don't think y'all hear me. If you have people coming out of the forest, out of the woods, 
out of the darkness, out of sin, coming to the light, coming to the well to get the water. If the tree line, if the forest is right there up on your property, then the tares can blend in with the wheat. And you may not even see them until it's too late. So you clear the you clear the, the land out to a certain distance so you can see if anybody is coming. And it gives you time to discern and see what's really going on. You see it all the time in the movies. You see it all the time in the shows. Now, he said that they look like you. They look like Christians. They look like believers. And they can do miracles like you. Let's get that from the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 1 through 5. One of my favorite set of scriptures in the Bible. And you'll see why. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Now notice where the prophet is arising from. This is the same thing that we just read in the book of First John 2, 19. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Now, did you catch that? What the prophet or the dreamer of dreams, what they said, it came to pass. The sign came to pass. The wonder came to pass. But what? But after it came to pass, they used that to deceive the people to go and go after other gods that we do not know. And to go serve them. I want to repeat that one more time. What the prophet, this prophet in the dream of dreams, they arose among us. They came out from among us. And what they said, the revelation, the prophecy, the dream, the sign, the wonder, the miracle, it came to pass. It happened. But they said, I can show you another way. Oh, that's, that's not right. Oh, Jesus isn't God manifesting the flesh. Let me give you the true revelation of it. Ultimately, they're going to lead you to worshiping Lucifer as God or worshiping themselves in the form of Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan. Then God says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. So why did the Lord allow this to happen? Watch the pattern. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That's the first commandment right there. So see, What's happening? What the, the laws of the Old Testament are the same laws of the New Testament. The 613 laws of Moses were added for the transgression so that everybody could come under the curse of sin and know that they are guilty so that they could receive grace. So you knew that you were guilty. If you don't know you're guilty, then how you know? I, I don't need Jesus. I'm not guilty of nothing. The promises could not come unless that happened. What is the first and great commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. What is the second commandment, which is like which is like unto the first commandment? To love your neighbor as you love yourself. There go right there, people. Oh, somebody just had a revelation. Somebody, somebody was just enlightened. Somebody was just free. Some strongholds were just broken. Because people are so confused, not realizing that's why he said in the book of John, first John. Uh, second John, third John, he said, behold, I give you a new commandment, which is not a new commandment. It's an old commandment that she had from the beginning, which is what to love one another. 
That has always been the law. That's always been the law. And here it is right here. So God is using this situation to prove us, to try us, to put us in the fire, to see who really loves him. In the same way, the same thing is happening in heaven, in the second heaven and in the third heaven. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Keep his commandments. Do we have to keep the commandments? Yes. He just told us the commandments. Jesus said the same thing. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage redeemed let's go let's go look up that word redeemed because people they y'all ain't understanding y'all ain't understanding what's really going on some of y'all ain't but we're going to get this revelation we're going to get this enlightenment redeem to purchase back well for you to be redeemed that means you had to be with him and then sold off to be bought back. If I'm going to the store to buy a bag of apples, I'm not going to redeem the bag of apples. I'm going to buy a fresh bag of apples that I never had in the first place. But if I buy something and I leave it at the store and I get a call, or I look at my receipt and say, oh, I don't have my apples. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to redeem my apples. Those apples were already mine. I'm going to get what was mine. So Christ came to buy, to purchase us back. He already had us in the first place. He had to. If he didn't, then we wouldn't be redeemed. Are we understanding? To be redeemed. You had to belong to something in the first place to repurchase what has been sold. We were sold unto, we were sold unto sin. So he came, he came to repurchase. Well, if he's repurchasing us, then he had purchased us in the first place. He had set us apart in the first place. And then we were lost because of sin and he paid the price. He bought us back. He redeemed us. He purchased us back. He repurchased us. He repurchased what has been sold through his blood. We belong to him in the first place. We were with him in his bosom in the first place. We were in his loins in the first place. Even when we were not brought forth physically, we were still in his loins. He knew that he was going to bring us forth. I'm going to paint this story so we can clear, see clearly what happened so many people want to know what happened what happened before this earth age what happened in the pre-adamic earth age we laying it out we laying it out as clear as day like a like a nursery rhyme so easy a two-year-old can understand it i'm telling you what happened now go confirm it now just believe me go confirm it and watch how your spirit be blown like mine was too So um, we see that. Then we want to go down to um, Matthew 24, verse 20. Matthew 24, probably 24, 24, not 29. Let me go back and change this real quick. Y'all give me a second. Get the wrong scripture up there. I apologize. Slowing the stuff down. Matthew 24, 24. Not twenty four, twenty nine. All right. Scroll down. Uh, come on, computer. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. We getting there. We getting there. All right. We here for those of you who are listening along. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise 
false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and what wonders then we just read that in so much that if it were possible if it were possible it's not possible to deceive the elect so it's just giving you something to compare and say hey it's going to be so bad that if it were possible if they didn't have the spirit of god dwelling in them that they would be deceived no matter how much wisdom they had they would still be deceived but because they have the spirit of god dwelling in them they would not be deceived And shall show great signs and wonders. So, we just read in the book of Deuteronomy that God allowed that to happen to prove if that particular person truly loved the Lord with all their heart and all their soul. So, we see a pattern, we see a correlation with Matthew 24, verse 24. And so, what does that tell us? that this time period right here with these false Christs and false prophets arising and showing great signs and wonders is a time of testing and proving for a specific group of people. I'm going to let y'all ponder on that for a little while. Then he also said, they won't, he said, they will be able to do miracles and everything like you can. He said, but they won't have the lifestyle. They won't have, they won't bear the fruit that you bear because the fruit that you bear is dependent on the spirit that you have. Let's get the correlating scripture to go with it. Luke chapter 6, verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit for thorns men do not gather figs nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes men do not go to thorns to go get figs men do not go to the bramble bush to gather grapes they go to the grape tree to get grapes they go to the fig tree to get figs because a grape tree brings forth grapes not bramble a fig tree brings forth figs not thorns because the seed is the seed the code is written for a fig tree to bring forth figs the seed the code within the seed of a grape tree is written to bring forth grapes the seed of a thorn tree or thorn plant is coated to bring forth thorns the, the code within the seed of a bramble bush is coded to bring forth bramble. The seed, the code that is written in the seed, the word of God, is written to bring forth righteous spiritual fruit. Are we understanding? For every tree is known by its own fruit because it will bring forth that fruit a banana tree cannot bring forth oranges a orange tree cannot bring forth apples a righteous tree in christ cannot bring forth unrighteous fruit continuously now every now and then you get some bad fruit on the tree guess what that fruit a hey, is gone but overall it's going to continue to bring forth that righteous spiritual fruit and how does fruit get get uh go bad by staying on the tree too long so the tree is then purged so it can do what bring forth more fruit bring forth eternal fruit that's the eternal cycle of life right there so we are purged so we can continue to bring forth eternal fruit in christ so um the last point that I want to bring up was, was this. He said he ran into the forest and these counterfeit people, these tares, they were camouflaged with the forest. Now, when you go into the forest, what happens? I'm not, I can't go into details about the forest in regards to the Bible and everything, but in the context of what he was talking about, the forest represents 
the world. The forest overall represents the world. And you have this covering of darkness. And from a scriptural standpoint, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. From a scriptural standpoint, in the forest is where the abominations were going, going on. Because they were using the forest, they were using the trees. Listen to what I'm saying. They were using the trees as a covering. Today, people are using the trees. They are using the gods as a covering. They are using the gods of this world as a covering for their sin. They are hiding behind the protection of the gods of this world to continue to do this, to offer these sacrifices to their gods. So God had him run into the forest so he could see what was going on because he said that the people, he didn't see them, but then they had, they were blended in. Then one moved slightly and then he said, oh my God, they're blended in with their surroundings. They were blended in with the darkness because they are of the darkness. They are not of the light. And so he had to really pay attention to be able to discern where they were and what they were doing. They went back to what they were comfortable with, so it was hard to see them. I'm going to give you another example. You see it in the movies all the time. They, they put this stuff in the movies, and people just think it's a joke. The guy is the guy's chasing another guy, right? And then what does the, what does the other guy do? One, the, the, the bad guy, the so-called bad guy, what does he do? He runs out into the crowd. And then the guy is just chasing him, is looking around, and he cannot tell where he went because he's blended in with the rest of the people. Then he said, the people who do not have the sermon won't be able to tell who is who. That's why you hear me hit so hard on these different things. Because if you don't have the discernment, you will not be able to tell that they are camouflaged because they are camouflaged so good that you have to watch like with the eyes of an eagle for, to see them move so you can mount your attack. Are we understanding? Now I'm going to give you a, a story. And I gave this story before. This is a real story. God is my witness. And it ties into what he was talking about in regards to how he ran into the forest. And then he was looking for him, and then he didn't he didn't see him because they were blended in. In this dream, which was really it was a vision, and it was real, but I was asleep. I was out the body, but I was in my bed sleep. I didn't know it at that time, but later the Lord revealed to me what was going on and everything. I was running through the forest. It was dark. And the guy that I was running next to at the time, I didn't know that it was Satan. But he was familiar to me. And it was a guy, I think, off the show Prison Break. The one that looks Middle Eastern. Interesting. <laughs> what we call Middle Eastern. Presenting himself as a Middle Eastern like Jesus. I know there's no such thing as Middle East and everything, but y'all know what I'm saying. He wasn't like dark, dark. He was like a bronze, bronze brown color. And he had long, wavy hair. I cannot remember that guy's name. But um he 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 was he was that's the guy that I was uh running running next to. And at the time when I was researching this different stuff, I went and looked this guy up. I looked his name up and everything, and the Lord was really showing me like, yeah. I use him as an example for you personally to show you that you used to run with Satan. You were familiar with him. And he was familiar with you. So God used that person because he knew that I was going to go search and seek these things out. And God did it like that to confirm that, hey, this is what I'm telling you is true. So like I said, I'm running through the forest with this, with this guy. And then like a movie, the scene cuts and I'm standing still. And I'm looking at the guy that I was running with through the forest, through the darkness. Now he's rising up out of the water. 
but he's on fire. And so I'm looking at him with my eyes bright. My eyes are like, whoa, my mouth is open. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Cue, cue the music. You know, you got the music. Ha, 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 ha. Boom, boom. Ha, ha, ha. Y'all yeah, know. That's how it was. That's how it was. I was in awe. I was like, because I didn't know what was going on. I was like, I'm just, I'm running with this dude. Now this scene is, is going on. I'm like, how's he on fire? Why is he walking out the water toward me? The water being a representation of the spirit. Because Satan is a spiritual being. The fire being a representation of the spirit also. He was in the flesh. So what I was what I was seeing was a spiritual representation and a physical representation. I was seeing in both worlds at the same time. I was seeing the physical world. And I was seeing the spiritual world. And we know that God is fire. And Satan would be a being of fire. Which is why he was on fire. And he was walking out of the waters. Also symbolizing and representing him coming out from not only the spirit. But coming out from amongst many peoples. Just as the book of Revelation talks about the dragon. The beast coming up out of the sea, out of the, up out of the many peoples. And so he started walking toward me. And I could feel, I, I'm asleep, but I could, I could literally feel this. I could feel the power coming forth, coming forth from him. And it was, it, it was strong. My God, it was strong. Then he got to a certain point And he stopped like he hit a wall. And that wall was a representation. It was like a force field. It was, the, as the Bible says, the hedge of protection that was around me. And then the next thing he did, it shook me in my sleep. I remember shaking in my sleep like I got hit with some bullets. But it didn't penetrate the force field. But his power was so strong that it shook even, it, 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 it shook, it shook me. He flicked me off with two middle fingers and he like threw them at me boom boom and it hit the force field it hit the, it hit the hedge of protection and when it hit in the physical world in my bed I, I i shook i felt it now it didn't it didn't hurt me but i felt it are y'all hearing what i'm saying so many people think that satan don't have power oh satan has some power but his power is not stronger than the power of God. So because I had that hedge of protection around me, I was good. But God was letting me know, like, hey, this ain't no game. This ain't no joke. If you didn't have that hedge of protection, oh, them fiery darts, they were going to tear you up like some hollow tip points. That with some, with some um, incinerary on the tip of it. So... Later, God gave me all these revelations in regards to what, what what this all was. And he was showing and telling me that I used to run with Satan. I used to run the race that Satan is running in darkness. And Satan got mad when I got saved. He got mad because he knew what it meant. Because he wanted me to continue to run with him and do the different things that that we were doing in darkness. But because of God's grace, I have that hedge of protection around me. And now I'm exposing the evil works of darkness because I was once in darkness and know how they are operating and what they are doing. And Satan, he hates that. And he's, he's extremely mad at me and more so mad at God because he, th he thought he had me. So, um, this is what was, um, going on with the, the word, the vision, the dream that Rod Pickens, um, had. And that's, you know, what I discern from it. I'm pretty sure you could discern something else and your perspective be right. As long as it's, you know, being discerned through the spirit.
But I want us to be aware of these things. I don't want us to be ignorant of these different things. And um, this warfare, y'all, it's real. It's real. People, oh, sound the alarm. Woohoo, sound the alarm. They sound the alarm and they have no party. We're not having a party. I keep on emphasizing we are literally at war. We are literally at war. Don't just take it for face value. Eat these bitter herbs and understand. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm going to show you the guy that I was talking about. All right, I could not find the guy. It wasn't the show Prison Break, and I don't know the name of the show. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and close it out. Um, maybe I'll think about it later and I'll find him. But, uh, again, with that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated. It is declared. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it was edifying to you, be sure to do your part and share it on all your social media outlets, websites, and forums. Your help is greatly appreciated to help fight this war and reach lost souls. Don't forget to like, dislike, and or subscribe. Be sure to also check out our website Staying focused for Jesus dot life. And make sure you check out that resource section, which has a lot of videos that I share and some other stuff, books, um, documents, PDF websites, many, many things. And it's growing daily as I add to it. Also follow us on Facebook for even more content. Staying focused for Jesus on Facebook. Squeeze it so tight, get the last drop Till there's nothing left until we pass out Keeping us around to clean up the mess And take the garbage out But we'll be trash next Create catastrophes to speed up the process Depopulation agenda progress News tell half-truths Hidden in plain sight They know we they Kool-Aid But gave us cyanide They know we don't see they know. They know you can't see it. see it. What they've done to us. Open your eyes. Lemonade. Don't drink the Kool Aid. It ain't safe for us. They made it so sweetly. So it will be easy to carry the plans out to eliminate us. Pay to receive, fabricated knowledge False education, standing ovation For my degree in indoctrination Georgia Godstones plainly tell us That they plan to eliminate us Conspiracy theory, we see no dilemma As they quietly wipe out billions They know we don't they know you can't see it They know What they done to us Taking us down Lemonade Don't drink the Kool-Aid It ain't safe for us they made it so sweetly So it will be easy To carry the plans out To eliminate us
like Geppetto, pulling the strings, master plan, dumb us all down, eat what they feed us, try not to think, carry on, nothing to see, as they continue with their killing spree, we wasting time on trivial things and buy what